channel. So thank you so much for watching. Today we're going to be talking about my experience going to the Caribbean for medical school and what my advice is to those of you who are considering going abroad. So if you want to hear more about it, please keep watching. So you want to go to medical school and you want to go abroad. Now the difficult choice is where do you want to go and what place is it that you think is going to be right for you? There's so many choices of different countries that have medical schools where you can study abroad. You can go to the US if you're from another country, the US would be going abroad. You could go to the Caribbean, you could go to the UK, you could go to Ireland, you could go to Australia, and you can go to other countries like India and Pakistan. Really, you have to go through each of these countries' options and look at what is right for you. It costs a lot of time and money to move to a different country to study abroad, and you have to make sure that the money that you're putting into it is gonna be worth it. I really recommend that when you do look at these programs, you look at, is this program right for you? How detailed and how well thought out is this program? Have people been successful in this program into matching into a, a residency in the country that you're looking for? Have students had positive reviews of the school? Did you feel like there was enough support? Because you are so far away from home, was there enough support in the school itself for you if you had any questions or you needed to do anything? One of the things that I really strongly recommend all of you think about when you are thinking about going abroad is can you commit to the level of independent learning that you need to do in order to get through these programs? Because I will, I will say it's not about passing the medical school's exams. The ultimate goal is matching into the residency of the country that you're looking for. So a lot of these countries, the overall goal is to transition into the U.S. and to match into the U.S. residency programs. You have to look at how successful are the students that go there and is this something that you feel like you can do. When I made the choice to go to the Caribbean for medical school, I made this decision based on people's referrals and people that were in my family's social circle that had done well in the program. But it was hard for me to know what questions to ask because they had either completed the program or their family didn't know much about it. So I did kind of go in blindly. But what I will say for you guys is that I wanted to give you guys some advice on what things to look for if you are going to the Caribbean specifically. So one thing that's really important to know that when you go to the Caribbean for medical school, you're getting a medical degree at the school you're going to, but it is not actually valid for you to work in the West Indies or the Caribbean uh, islands themselves. The medical degree you get does not work there. You cannot get a residency in the Caribbean once you complete the Caribbean program. The point in these Caribbean schools is that you do your uh, classroom learning while you're living on the island, but then you transition to the US to do your clinical rotations there. They do not help you get clinical rotations in Canada or in the UK or anywhere in Europe. So 99% of the time, they're going to be helping you get into a US residency by having your clinical rotations set up there. But for people who are interested in going abroad and actually continuing studying there and, and working there afterwards, you would need to have a residency or complete the program in that country there. And you wanna make sure that the medical school you go to, the MD degree you get from it actually is what works for that country and that it would uh, be legally uh, accredited. One thing that's also very important in Caribbean schools is make sure that the school you go to is accredited. There are a lot of Caribbean schools that are affordable and are smaller or newer and they may or may not have accreditation. And I will say that once a school has that accreditation, it allows graduates of that school to apply to a larger base of states for their residencies. If you are from a not accredited school, you are kind of pigeonholed into a smaller amount of states in the US that you can apply to for a residency. So I think that's very important to distinguish. I actually did not go to an accredited school and 
it prevented me and it will prevent other residents from applying to states such as New York, New Jersey, um, California, Texas. Uh, there's a whole laundry list of states. So you wanna be very careful with that. Again, like I said, it costs a lot of money to be able to go to medical school, no matter where you go. And you wanna make sure that the money you are putting towards it is going to be maximized to your benefit. There's a lot of appeal with these more affordable schools that have lower tuition, but there are some downfalls to that. And you have to be aware when you sign up for it. Going back to me, I chose to go to the Caribbean based on cost and different family friends references um, on who had completed the program and had matched into US residency. They had gone to various different medical schools and I had two friends who had gone to the school that I went to. And I will say it was a more affordable school and it was um, fairly newer and it was a bit of a intimidating experience, but I knew and you need to make this commitment when you go there that you are going to heavily commit to independent learning. All medical schools have a certain curriculum and structure and program, but there is a lot of self-studying that has to go into what you do in order to make sure you know the material and you are able to answer all the questions that come your way. I will say that medical school has their own type of questions and their own exams and midterms and final exams, but the USMLEs, if you're going to be going into a US residency, the USMLEs are very difficult questions and they are very specific types of questions. And you have to really dedicate yourself to learning the material and being able to apply yourself once you get there um, in your third and fourth year, applying yourself and having a really good base knowledge from your medical school years to be able to answer those questions. In 2013 is when I made the choice to go to the Caribbean. I applied and I got in and I moved to the island of St. Kitts in 2013. I lived on that island for a year and a half and oh my God, it was so much fun. It was a beautiful island. I had the best time. I got to meet the most wonderful people and I really can't say enough good things about my school experience and my time on the island. The thing you have to remember with moving to the Caribbean is that it's beautiful. Of course, you're going to be moving into warm, sunny weather 24 seven. You're going to be have full access to beaches and water sports and nightlife and traveling and eating out. And there's so many fun things to do when you're living on a Caribbean island and you can do whatever you want. And that's what the really difficult thing is, is that you almost have to pretend that it's not there and block it all out and pretend you're at a normal school. And where I live in Canada, you know, in the freezing temperatures outside and you're inside at home studying. So not to say I didn't enjoy myself, I definitely did, but you have to spend your time wisely. And we definitely enjoyed when we would finish exams or have you know, time for our mid semester breaks, things like that. Living on the island was really, really fun, but it was also really hard. It's really challenging. You're, you're thousands of miles away from home. You're not close to your friends and family, and you kind of have to start fresh and you have to be away from home and meet new people and learn how to drive on the other side of the road because they're the British system and you have to rent a car and get an apartment and do all these things by yourself, which really pushed me to be really efficient on living on my own. So what I did was I was super committed and I studied every single day. I was really on top of my lectures and I did well on my exams and my school every quarter did um, MBMEs. NBMEs are tests that are made actually by the same company as the USMLEs. So they do try to prepare you to take the steps and get yourself familiar with their types of question format. NBMEs were hard, but you know, we did them and it really set me up in order to take my step one when I left the island. I would say the whole time that you're on the island, you have to be preparing for step one. And if you do that and if you're dedicated, you can take the time off that you need, be ready for that exam. So I took six months off in order to study for my step one, which I did feel like was a bit long, but I wanted to be sure, you know, everybody tells you that that exam is the most scariest, worst exam of your life, and they were right. 
Oh my God, I was terrified when I wrote that exam. I did it in October of 2015. So I took that exam and I got my score and I got 220. Now, I want to say that not everybody in medical school is going to score a 250 plus and the people who do, that's wonderful. They're so brilliant and it's so amazing, but not everybody will get that mark and it's okay. You don't need to be discouraged or disappointed. It's proof in real life of how challenging that exam is and how difficult it is to get an extremely high score. Most people will get an average score and that's exactly what I got an average score, which means that it puts you in the category of being able to be considered for a US residency. And it just means that you just gotta work that much harder into your cores and your elective rotations and do well on step two. Now, I wanted to do a video on step one and step two and my experiences with them, but it's so crazy that this year with the pandemic, everything has changed. So step two CS is officially canceled forever. Like what? It is so crazy. And step one is going to become pass fail in 2022. So really the medical students who are taking it for the remainder of this year have to do well on that exam. But the emphasis on a good score is going to be now heavily placed on step two CK. So. I can always do a video on my study experience and what I did to um, prepare for those exams. And it's probably the same compared to a lot of other students, but I can always talk about it if you like. My step one score was okay, it was average. And then my step two CK score was, was good too. And then I passed my step two CS the first time. So, you know, you have to be accepting of these things and you gotta move on and you gotta just keep pushing through. What I wanna do is in the next video, I'm gonna make this a two-part series. In the next video, I'm gonna talk about my strategies for how I prepared to apply for the US match and how I got uh, my US residency in my on my first try with these types of scores. So if you guys wanna just hang tight for that video, I will have that up soon and Thanks so much for listening. If you have any questions about anything I talked about, please let me know. I will talk to you guys later. Bye guys.